President Biden spending Thanksgiving weekend in Nantucket appeared to be move, moving slowly and talking haltingly at times. Meanwhile, former president and current GOP frontrunner Donald Trump seemed in fine shape as he attended a college football game in South Carolina, was met with, as you can hear, mostly roaring cheers, a couple of naysayers in the audience, but not many. All is not good omens for Biden, who continues falling in the polls. With me now is former presidential candidate and former Arkansas governor Mike Huckabee. Mike, great to see you. Thanks for being here. Now, issues are very important. They're certainly important in this race, but so is the perception of leadership, particularly in a presidential race at a time when, when the, the nation and the whole world is, is in such a, a bad shape right now. Who looks more capable of running the country? Well, you have one candidate, Joe Biden, who, when he lit the candles on his birthday cake, were, uh, set off a four-alarm fire in D.C. Uh, I mean, that was just amazing. I can't believe they let that picture get out. But it's not about the birthday candles and how many he has. It's about whether he's cognitively able to do the job. And when you watch him and when you listen to him, you see a man shuffling on and off the stage. Uh, you see a person who has to be told which way to go, even though there are marks all over a stage for a president to tell him which way to go. Uh, he can't remember the names of his cabinet members when he's at the podium. Th this is a president who clearly has some impairment issues. Donald Trump goes out on the field and, you know, some people say, oh, he was booed. Others, oh, he was cheered so widely. I I'm sure it had a lot to do with the perception. But the fact is he walked out there and he looked like he uh, was having a great time. And I think he was cheered. Quite frankly, every politician gets booed at an athletic event. It's the American way. It's what we do. <laughs> so that he got a lot of cheers is in itself simply remarkable. Yeah. You know, what I hearken back to uh, when I compare the two men in, in public is that is the late 1970s when, when Jimmy Carter was running for re-election. And it's that perception of weakness uh, the perception of weakness that we all felt back then, the, the weakness of the economy, the weakness of America's role in the world, the perception that the rest of the world had of what America was capable of, particularly our enemies, uh, it's, it's that perception of weakness, I think, that, that really sticks in, in voters' minds. Well, there's no doubt about it. People uh, want to believe their president is not only strong for them, but that he's strong against our enemies and that when he flexes America's muscles, the world leaders believe that he means what he says. They don't believe Joe Biden means what he says because they don't know what he's saying because Joe doesn't know what he's saying. And that's a real problem. And I don't mean that facetiously, David. It, it's a serious problem when a president is perceived to not be in complete command of what he's doing. And we saw the failure in Afghanistan and that exit We've seen uh, sort of the mixed messages, even with Ukraine, and now somewhat of a mixed message with Israel. I, I give the president credit. He's overall been very strong in his support for Israel. But then you get the perception that he's pushing Israel to step back, let Hamas have more time, and we're watching hostages come out, but not one of them has been an American, one with dual citizenship, but that's it. Well, he even apologized for correctly originally calling out uh, Hamas and, and the, the bad information that the press was reporting from Hamas mouthpieces about how many people have been killed. We all remember what happened with that hospital when it turned out the, the missile was actually fired from inside Gaza by Islamic Jihad, not by the Israelis, and it fell on, on a parking lot, not on the hospital itself, and a few dozen people were killed, which is bad enough, but not 500. He's now apologizing for criticizing Hamas propaganda. I, I can't figure that one out. Can you? No, I can't. I think we've got to keep the focus on the fact that even in the hostage exchange, innocent people were taken hostage. The people that are being let go, the Palestinians, were all in jail because they committed crimes, serious terroristic crimes, suicide bombers, terrible crimes. Yeah. And so it's not a, uh, a, a situation of equivalence. It just isn't. Yeah. And we yeah. need to stand firm and clear with Israel on this. No equivalence between psychopathic killers, which is what Hamas is, and the state of Israel. That's absolutely clear. Yeah. It has to be made clear. Governor Huckabee, good to see you. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it.